In this video, we are going to talk about variations in the arterial pulse. Before we go to the variations, let us focus first on a normal pulse wave. What is a pulse? Whenever there is a cardiac systole, there is a gush of blood into the iota and the peripheral blood vessels. This is basically felt as a lateral pressure whenever we feel a pulse. If we graph this pulse variation, we get a wave which we call it as a pulse wave. This will have two peaks. One is the P wave. Then you get a notch here that is seen as a dichrotic notch. And then you get another peak. This first wave, that is the P wave, is because of the arterial uh, cardiac systole where there is large gush of blood entering into the blood vessel. The no diacrotic notch which occurs here is because of the closure of the aortic valve and after that there is fall in the pressure inside the uh, peripheral artery. This is seen as the downstroke. The part of the wave which is colored here in pink is seen uh, during systole and the part of the wave which is shaded purple is seen during the cardiac diastole. Now I'll focus on the variations occurring in the arterial pulse. The first variation we're going to see is the pulse's alternance. As the name suggests, there is something alternating. So in this type of pulse, we see an alternating small volume pulse and then a large volume pulse and then a small volume pulse. This is mainly seen in case of left ventricular failure. So why does this happen? In case of left ventricular failure, the left ventricle is unable, does not have enough power to contract to send a large volume of blood. So at that time, you will see a small volume pulse. But whenever only small, some amount of blood is pushed into the iota, for the next contraction, part of the blood volume is still left. So a larger volume of blood is remaining before the next contraction. And because this larger volume of blood causes more dilatation or stretching of the myocardium, According to Frank Stalling law, for the next contraction, more power is generated by the left ventricle and hence this will give rise to a high volume pulse. Since this happens in left ventricular failure, you will get an alternating small volume pulse, then a large volume pulse and then again a small volume pulse. Next coming is the pulses bis variance. As the name suggests, bis means two. There is something double happening here. In the diagram, you can see there are two upstrokes occurring before the dichrotic notch. That is, there are two peaks during the systole in the arterial pulse wave. But actually, there are not they are they are not two different upstrokes. During the single upstroke, there is a notch which occurs, which makes it look like as if there are two peaks during the systole. This is seen in case of diseases of the iota like severe aortic regurgitation. In severe aortic regurgitation, initially there is a rapid upstroke but when a large volume of blood is passing at a high speed in the iota, as the Bernoulli's principle goes, when a fluid is flowing at a high rate in a tube, the, there is negative pressure created on the lateral walls which will suck inside the arterial wall. This will cause slight fall in the pressure inside the artery giving rise to this notch. So this is what happens in case of a severe aortic regurgitation. In case of hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy, initially there is an upstroke during the cardiac systole. But at mid systole when there is the uh, septum which has hypertrophied obstructs the aortic outflow, there is a notch which is seen because of the decreased blood flow. So the two causes for pulses bisferens will be severe aortic regurgitation and HOCM. This condition can also be seen if there is aortic stenosis associated with aortic regurgitation. A similar uh, pulse wave to pulses bisferens is the pulses bigeminus. Here also you will see two different upstrokes. But why is there a two upstroke here? In this case, after the diacrotic notch, that is during diastole, there is a premature ventricular contraction and that gives rise to another upstroke and another pulse wave. The only difference between pulses bisferens and pulses bigeminus is that in pulses bigeminus, there is no compensatory pause in between two waves, whereas in pulses bisferens, there was a compensatory pause. 
Next comes the pulses paradoxes. The name suggests that there is some paradox that is opposite to the normal, but actually this is just an exaggeration of a normal physiological phenomena. In a normal person during inspiration because there is negative intrathoracic pressure created there is increased flow of blood into the right atrium in, into the right ventricle whereas because there is inflation of the lung there is stasis or pooling of blood in the left vent, uh, in the lungs and th- because of that the venous return to the left side of the heart is reduced hence in a normal person during inspiration you will get a slightly low volume pulse and during expiration you will get a slightly higher volume of pulse in a normal person the systolic blood pressure will fall by less than 10 mm of hg but if this variation that is fall in the blood pressure systolic blood pressure is greater than 10 mm of hg then you get a still more lower volume pulse in inspiration than in expiration this is seen this is called as pulses paradoxes pulses paradoxes is mainly seen in case of constrictive pericarditis cardiac tamponade or hyperinflation diseases of the lung like asthma and copd so what happens in case of a cardiac tamponade this is the pericardial space which is filled by the uh, pericardial effusion fluid or the cardi- uh, blood in case of cardiac tamponade Uh, this because of the presence of fluid in the uh, pericardial space the left ventricle is not able to pump blood properly and hence it is not able to bring up enough pressure to counteract the bulging of the septum due to right ventricle hence because there is increased blood flow because there is increased blood flow in the right ventricle this will push the septum towards the left ventricle and hence this causes further reduction of the uh, volume of the left ventricle which causes further reduction of the pulse volume during inspiration so this is the main mechanism of pulses paradoxes in case of cardiac tamponade or a pericardial tense pericardial effusion water hammer pulse also called as watson's water hammer pulse or the corrigan pulse is seen in case of chronic aortic regurgitation in this you will see a rapid upstroke and then there is no diacritic notch seen there is sudden rapid downstroke in case of aortic regurgitation a large volume of blood is pushed with at high velocity into the aorta this is seen as rapid upstroke and as the diastole of the cardia of the left ventricle starts there is no closure of the aortic valves and because of the negative pressure which is created by the left ventricle there is gush of blood which falls back into the left ventricle causing a sudden downstroke you have to note that water hammer pulse will be seen only in chronic aortic regurgitation and not in acute aortic regurgitation because for a water hammer pulse to occur there should be compensatory dilatation of the left ventricle has to occur to make up for the volume overload that's it in this video thank you for watching